The waters off of Florida's southern tip are so hot you could mistake a dip in the Atlantic for a hot tub. It was 97 degrees in Fort Myers and 94 in Miami Tuesday. A buoy in Manatee Bay read as high as 101 degrees. All of the, these hot temperatures on sea and on land are concerning scientists about the future of the planet. A recent article published in The Atlantic is titled, Climate Collapse Could Happen Fast. Our next guest was cited in that piece. Allegra Legrand is a climate scientist at NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies. Welcome. Thanks for being here. In the, in the Atlantic article, um, which the point of the Atlantic article is to, is to consider the pace of climate change, you're quoted as saying, for a long time we were within the range of normal, and now we're really not. What does that mean? What that means is uh, climate change has happened at a pace now that we have memories of when we were kids or even a decade ago when summers felt different. And climate change has finally hit that point where it's no longer in the range of what we're accustomed to experiencing, like extreme temperatures in the summertime. It's something beyond that and something that we've experienced and we have a memory of experiencing. Do you think that will change the way in which, um, I mean, this is a, um, but are there other periods in, um, where that might change the way people approach this issue? I think that, you know, living in the climate change yourself, it's one thing to see a story on TV and think about it as being as, uh, in a remote place in the world. But right now, I mean, just as you mentioned in Florida, uh, the ocean temperatures are like a hot tub. And in Canada, in Quebec, this summer, we've been de dealing with the wildfires here in New York City. In Greece, they have extreme temperatures and wildfires that are raging. Uh, the whole world, it seems, is really experiencing some of these really extreme weather, whether it's the temperature extremes or the precipitation extremes. And that makes everyone have a part in the climate change. Let me ask you about this idea of, of tipping points or points of no return, and correct me if that's not the way to be talking about it, but there was a report Tuesday about the Atlantic Ocean current. Um, that seemed to suggest a kind of a very big movement. I mean, that's not just hot temperature, but maybe something changing forever. So in the Atlantic Ocean, we have two basic kinds of circulation. One is surface currents, like the Gulf Stream, um, the other is a, a current called Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation. This is a density-driven current. It's where waters basically sink off the tip of Greenland, and they travel in the abyss back towards the, the uh, Southern Ocean. The scientists in that piece, they think that the density-driven circulation is going to be interrupted by uh, disturbances in the fresh water at the surface. So if Greenland starts melting too much, then the waters on the surface no longer become so dense. Now, why, is this, why does this matter for us? Um, that additional deep water circulation, of course, has to be balanced by additional surface circulation. So when that deep water is traveling south, yeah. more surface circulation is traveling north. And so you can get a regional cooling effect if that uh, deep water circulation in the Atlantic slows down. But I have to say, I, we don't really know whether or not that's going to happen. And uh, their piece, it, it's... It's not something that's necessarily backed up by the state-of-the-art climate models that were used in the last intergovernmental panel on climate change. And it's still very much something that it depends on who you ask and who's doing the interpreting of the observations. If, there, if that does happen, though, is that in a different category? In other words, is it a bruise to climate, something that happens and then improves? Or is it something that we're talking about that once that happens, um, once that current changes, that's, that's it. So I, I don't know that it's really helpful to talk about points of no return. Okay. Uh, so uh, I think that climate change is going to be gradational. So if we do something today to shift the course we're on, it will have impacts downstream. It's not that we've, you know, crossed, we've crossed the, past, the point of no return. We have not. The time for action is now, and there is still time to avert the largest climate change by reducing the amount of greenhouse gases that we're putting in the atmosphere every year. There is the tipping point in that sense, like, you know, if, if Greenland stops, we stop putting such extreme forcing on Greenland, we stop making it so hot by having so much greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, those things will recover. And so the, uh, 
it's, I think it's more productive to just talk about, like, it, the time for action is now. We're experiencing climate change, and now is the time to act to avert more climate change. Allegra Legrand, thank you so much for being here. Thank you.